Welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this ball mill or rock tumbler. They function as the same thing. It depends what media you put in them. But the nice part about the one I made is you can not only put different sizes of drums in it, so you don't have to be committed to a very large or a very small drum, but you also don't have the large purchase price of $150 or more. So let's get to it. For my drum, I'm going to be using some Schedule 40 PVC and a couple quick caps. Both the caps were like seven bucks at Menards. And I got some scrap bits of plywood that I'm going to use. And we're going to need three of these. Here's about the dimensions I'm working with, but it could change based on your build. I got a windshield wiper motor, a few roller blade wheels, and some cheap bearings that fit those wheels. So I just drilled and countersunk these for some screws and I did this at both ends looking at our windshield wiper motor you will see that the shaft just goes back and forth this is not actually ideal I would prefer one where this continued to go in circles but I'm gonna make this one work because I still think I can attach to this shaft and I think these are a little bit more common first off I need to get it apart so I remove the c-clip the screws off of the back and this shows you the internal structure and we're not going to need this bar or this plastic piece because I removed the c-clip this gear will come right out and now I just need to clean it up so that, that way we don't end up with a bunch of metal shavings stuck in with the grease now there may be a better way to make an attachment to this but this was what I could think of I'm drilling through the center and I wish I would have went halfway on each side because as you can see it didn't turn out the straightest but it'll still work. So now I removed the head off of a screw and I'm going to use this to mix epoxy up because that already gets epoxy on there. We're going to epoxy this in that hole that we just made. So now I just set that aside to cure in my vise. Now I put a lock nut on the end of it and I'm going to drill a hole through it and this is going to be for a key to go through. And I really should have used cutting oil here. So I took some of the grease that was in here and moved it over to the gears where it would be able to actually lubricate them. We want this to last as long as possible and I would like to tell you that this is not the best motor to do this with. However, they are very cheap and easy to come by. And if you did have to replace it, it would only cost you maybe 10 bucks. So now that's done, we can put it back together. So I want to cut off the parts that I don't need. Instead of breaking out the old saw and sitting there hacking at it, try this new technique. Now grab a hold of the two parts and concentrate. Now I'm going to mount it onto the side with a couple drywall screws and I'm not trying to get this super tight. I want it to have a little bit of a give in case the shaft isn't lined up perfectly. Now using my rotary tool, I put a flat spot on my threaded rod and I'm going to drill a hole through that. That's also going to be for a key. So directly opposite of our motor shaft, we need to make a pilot hole and then we need to drill this out for the bearing and drill it out for our threaded rod to go all the way through. So I cut about an inch off of this half inch diameter tubing. And I ran my piece of ready rod through and I hooked it all together. This is just to get my length. With that temporary in place, I can now cut the excess off. So for these bearings, I don't actually want to work as bearings. So I'm pulling the covers off and I'm adding a bit of CA glue into them. These are going to go onto my powered shaft, so I don't want them to spin freely. So here's the setup I got. I got those bearings on each side and then I have a locking nut on each side of those. And I did this at both ends. Now I put one lock nut at the end and that's just so that, that way it'll hold the bearing into the plywood. Now I can slip the rod back in place. I'm gonna take and tighten these lock nuts down and pinch these tires, but I wanna make sure that they're adjusted to where they're not going to hit the 
rubber end caps. And this is where you could adjust this for a whole bunch of different lengths of, of tumbler drums. So now with a couple of wrenches, I just make sure both those tires are pinched nice and tightly. So now I'm heating up a couple pieces of wire and these are gonna act as our keys. I'll bend these over so they don't come back out on me. So now for the other side, at about the same height, I'm going to drill out a couple holes for the bearings to go into. Also I need to drill a hole for the threaded rod. Just so it's clear, all the bearings I use in this are able to move except for those four on the power wheels. I put the bearings in the end blocks and the tires and I was able to put this together temporarily so I could figure out how much I need to shave off the corner of these blocks. With the corners cut off, I could start to take and pre-drill these and countersink them so it fits nice and flat on the table, and then screwing them down tight. So now as I'm putting this together, something I would like you to note is that I only have a lock nut at each end, and that's just to keep the shaft from going side to side. I actually figured it would be easier to adjust this in the future by just taking and holding the tires in place with some zip ties. So a lot of rock tumblers or ball mills have little baffles in them to help stir things up, kind of like your dryer does. So I just cut another piece of PVC down to the length I needed it, cut that in half, and then cut a couple strips out of it. I'm not sure how many I'm going to put in mine, but I'm going to start off with one and see if it meets my needs. Used a marker on the table to get a straight line. And it was pretty straightforward to drill it from here. However, I did have to cut the screws off so that, that way they didn't protrude too much. And I did countersink these as well so that, that way they didn't interfere with the wheels. So now I'm going to put the end caps on with the hose clamp that's provided fill it with whatever media I would like. And now all we have to do is power. So for power in this you could use an old computer power supply. You could also use a laptop charging brick. But these things are noisy so I decided to take and hook mine up to my solar panel. With that this project's done. And as you can see all you have to do is adjust the wheels and you can fit different size of tumblers in it. I wanted to ask you guys, what do you want to see me make? Maybe I can fit it into a video, maybe not right now, maybe in the future. I mean, I can't exactly make a Tesla tomorrow, but we'll see. Throw it at me and it might happen. Till then, see you next time.